Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I'm finally going to sit down and do a recent reading wrap-up. I have missed doing monthly wrap-ups for the last few months and it's just been one of those things that I've been putting off for so long that I haven't had the energy to, to deal with. Um, but I think that I will start from February and move my way forward until I feel like I've been talking for too long and then I'll cut it and potentially do another uh, part of this or I will save it for um, when I do talk about my May reading. So we'll see how far we get. The books that I read for February and March mostly contained of um, book two prize books. So the ones that were not book two prize, we have um, a Swedish book called Inni från Satmi. This is an anthology of Sami writers that most of these are essays, some of them are sort of poetry, um, bordering on the flash fiction, but I would say mainly it is essays and some of them in poetic form. Some of them are talking about Sami history and sort of timelines of things, such as the um, forced movement of... there's a particular word for that but I can't think of it now, um, of an entire people. Um, there's a lot of talk about other ways that the Sami people, um, the, an, indig an indigenous group in Sweden and the, the Nordic countries have been uh, persecuted and have been treated unjustly by the state of the Nordic countries, particularly this is focusing on Sweden and Norway. And I think there's just so many valuable things to gain out of this collection. I hope it will get an English translation, but it is published by an indie press in Sweden. So uh, I don't know if this uh, entire collection will be available in English anytime soon, but I hope that some of the authors included in this will. But yeah, this was a fantastic uh, source of different Sami writers for me to try out and different parts of Sami history that was fascinating, as well as talking about things such as sort of um, protecting your culture, um, particularly the the balancing act of protecting your culture and, and furthering it down generations. Uh, that balanced with the need for survival and uh, conforming as a way of survival and how much is lost through that need to make that choice. And then another book I read in February was a reread for me and I think it is the only book I have reread this year so far. It is Kamikaze Girls by Noara Takimoto and this was translated from the Japanese by Akemi Wegmuller. This is a book that I've actually reread once before as well, and I think this will be one of those books that I return to occasionally when I feel like I need a comfort read. Um, I was just sort of, uh, I was craving this book for some reason out of the blue, and it did exactly what I needed it to do. Uh, it is a story of friendship, and um, there's a lot of things that I really love about the portrayal of friendship in this book. Uh, part of it is sort of the mutual respect and appreciation that these two uh, female characters have for each other despite their obvious differences and their differences comes down to things like lifestyle and, and style and taste and interests and everything that seems on the surface to be the most significant. The, the fact that they even become friends seems odd to everyone around them uh, because they have, they seemingly have nothing in common, but in fact they, they share sort of foundational values, I think, that make their bond very strong, um, pretty much without them even realizing that it happened. Um, and I find this to be such a as I said, comfort, a comforting read and um, heartwarming 
it's kind of funny sometimes. Uh, it helps if you're interested in Lolita fashion, which is a Japanese sort of subgenre <laughs> fashion style. Um, but it, it isn't at all uh, a necessity to enjoy this book. So um, yeah, for me, this is just a really fun, fun one that I know that I will be returning to um, whenever I am in the mood for kind of a pick me up. A book that I borrowed from my library is called Prologue by Elnaz uh, Baglanian. And this is a poetry collection in Swedish, but the author is uh, Iranian. Uh, she is Iranian Swedish. Um, I think she moved to Sweden as a 10 year old or something like that. Um, but this poetry collection is partly about um, identity and identity sort of con connected to heritage and how you. Um, how you relate yourself to heritage, especially when the heritage is sort of fraught with um, with uh, emotional baggage. There was a lot of things to do with motherhood in particular that I really loved in this collection. Uh, so this was a fantastic poetry collection and um, I haven't read as much poetry as I wanted to. I've definitely been meaning to and it is one of my goals this year. Um, but this was a standout, so I would love to read more uh, poetry by this author and uh, to buy a copy of this one because, as I said, I borrowed it from my library. So then we have the book two prize books that I spent most of the rest of February and entirety the entirety of March to read. Uh, and I haven't done a book two prize ranking video. Uh, I meant to, and time escaped me, so I will just talk about my rankings as I go through them. Um, um, I did the judge, judging for nonfiction group E and so the first one I have is the one I placed last in the order and that is A Ghost in the Throat. This is part memoir, part biography, so the memoir aspect of it is about motherhood, becoming a mother in particular and there's little sections there's sections when she's pregnant and there's sections when she has a young child and sort of taking care of her child. Um, and the biography aspect is on a female poet. I feel like it was like 18th century uh, poetry, but I I can't say for sure, but basically it is a historical um, female poet that she is also chronicling her life. Um, the reason it got uh, the last placement in the list is that I felt it didn't come together fully, it didn't feel cohesive to me. So the first section where she is centered around motherhood, becoming a mother, I really loved. I loved her writing on it. I think there were a lot of scenes in that section that felt memorable to me and very, um, very vivid, uh, particularly when she's talking about uh, donating, um, donating uh, milk, uh, breast milk. Those sections, I feel like, were uh, really well written. But then there's the sections that, generally speaking, I just felt kind of lost. And then my main issue with this book was the, the entirety of the biography on the female poet that I think didn't really serve a purpose in this book. If she had talked more about the fact that she's obsessing over this woman and the obsessing being kind of a coping mechanism for something, if she had delved into her why she was interested in the female poet, that would have been an interesting topic to me. Or if she'd gone into connecting, I think, the female poet more to her own life or something like that. I think that could have worked, but I, f I felt like the biography was completely separate to her life and it was sort of the book in a book and to me it just didn't become a case of whole. The book that I placed first in my list was Beloved Beasts by Michelle Nishuis, uh, Fighting for Life in an Age of Extinction and this is talking about various people who have been significant in the um, conservation movement. I, I would say as a as a very summarized uh, synopsis um, and it's kind of no surprise that I would be interested in a book on nature and environmentalism and conservation. It was executed well, it felt like a good overview of uh, some of the people who have been significant in the movement historically and sort of 
the way the movement as a whole has changed over the last uh, 200 or so years and the people that it's focusing on the the stories about them also uh, highlighting some of the big turning points in uh, our understanding of the environment and how it has changed in uh, crucial ways over the years. So I feel like this was both uh, structured well to me, uh, it was accessible information, it was an author who was present in the text in a good way, which again I will, is something I will get back to. Um, it felt like an author that was very aware of themselves and who could present information but also be critical in the text and also not push their own agenda on you. Um, so I just felt like this was a really well balanced nonfiction book that was also on a topic that is very important and done in an accessible and st well structured way that will make this one uh, worthwhile for a lot of people. Then we have two biographies that uh, were my second and third place in the booktube prize and to be honest they could have very easily switched place and this came down mostly to my subjective interest but also partly to something in the book. So um, my second placement was The Sinner and the Saint, uh, Dostoevsky, A Crime and Its Punishment by Kevin Birmingham and this is mainly a biography of Dostoevsky. It is talking somewhat about the crime that inspired the Crime and the Punishment book. Uh, I haven't read it so I didn't really have a close understanding of the novel's progression so because of that I think I think maybe it was even a, um, a benefit for me because it goes into so many details. I was discovering it as I was reading it. As I said, it's talking somewhat about the novel and its birth, uh, Crime and Punishment, and all of the production of it, um, the inspiration that Dostoevsky had, the context for which he in which he was writing it, um, his own personal experiences and how they influenced his writing of it. But overall I would say it's more a Dostoevsky biography and you sort of get that aspect of his career as well because it was significant, a significant point in his career. Um, but I thought it was just really fascinating and I think um, there was a lot of tidbits in this that I found fascinating. I thought the biography style really, really really worked. For me this was just sort of perfectly balanced with having a flair of the um, of the narrative but also being loaded with information and a lot of it fascinating to me and sort of all of the things related to the law at this point in time, the development of the society of the time, um, his uh, Dostoevsky's own writing career and that developing over time and all of his influences, all of his um, ups and downs in his life. There was just a lot of... I f felt like this was a really interesting subject and a biography that did this subject well. And then the other one that I placed in third place for the Book Two Prize ranking is The Doctor's Blackwell. How Two Pioneering Sisters Brought Medicine to Women and Women to Medicine by Janice P. Nimura. And this is, uh, as it says, a um, biography of the Blackwell sisters, Elizabeth and um, Emily. And this was fascinating in a lot of ways and I, there was a lot of things that I really liked about this. It was interesting to read about these two sisters and their differences and their uh, attempts at making a career in medicine and their trials and tribulations in that process. Um, the interesting thing about this is that the subjects themselves are not entirely likable um, and I, that isn't a problem in and of itself. Uh, I think a a subject can still be really interesting even though they don't seem like the best of people. Um, the only issue I had was that sometimes I felt like the author wasn't um, 
critical enough to me uh, about their flaws. In comparison to this one, I would say this is much, um, much more, um, you can sort of just jump into this one. Although I would say that I found this to be more exciting in, in general throughout the book uh, to this. I think this to me seemed um, slower to get kind of a head start and I don't know if it is if it was just my mood or if it was that it took me a while to feel like I, I understood and, and knew these women and so it took me a longer time to feel invested in their lives in, compar in comparison to this. And then for the book two prize I also read Facing the Mountain uh, by James Brown I think. Daniel uh, James Brown, Facing the Mountain, which is a oral history of uh, the Second World War from the Japanese Americans perspective. And this to me was an example of a book that had very, very valuable contents. The stories themselves in, uh, in this book I thought were interesting and worthwhile. Uh, but the, but my issue with this one came to the structure. Um, it is, as I said, kind of an oral history, so we are following um, a number of people and their life stories, and we go back and forth between different people, and I just found it difficult to get a sense of the similarities between them, the differences between them in their lives because of the the way we are sort of jumping back and forth and I couldn't keep track of who was who and what part of their life belonged to who made it hard for me to really appreciate uh, the the patterns in their in their stories and the the way that their stories fit into a larger narrative and I wish that there was more analysis and more commentary on the the people the people's stories in a context but for me they they felt too individualized and there is also uh, a very strong focus on the military and the soldier perspective um, and I wish there were more on the civilians and on the women uh, in this situation. So my issues isn't really with the contents, uh, it's more a structure a aspect of it um, and a lack of certain types of stories or not enough of certain types of stories. So that is the reason it got a lower placement. I think this was one I placed on the fourth place. The last one of the book two prize books that I haven't talked about yet is The Codebreaker, Jennifer Doudna, Gene Editing and the Future of the Human Race by Walter Isaacson. And this I placed on the fifth place. I, I mentioned something earlier about the author being um, sort of inserting themselves in the book and to me Walter Isaacson inserted himself too much. Um, I felt like his opinions were very obvious in the book and that they were pushed on me and I didn't really like it. <laughs> so um, I think Jennifer Doudna had, has had an interesting life and she's obviously done important work. But there's a few things that I, I had issues with, I would say. So first of all, it's always difficult with a biography of someone who's still alive that is a very contemporary biography. I don't think I've read many of those and I just felt kind of weird about it. So there's that aspect that didn't really have anything to do with the book itself, but it was something that I was thinking about. Um, then there's the aspect of the biography writing style. So Walter Isaacson to me does too much almost creating a legend of Jennifer Doudna so he talks about all her hardships and all of the things that she had to overcome to become this success story and there was just too much to me emotional manipulation on getting being on her side and she being able to overcome all of these things because she felt so passionately about this uh, purpose and it's just that there's too much um, appraisal and um, too much 
putting on a pedestal kind of things to me um, that I didn't like and I felt like were unnecessary. But then there's certain things that I felt were um, too limited in the book. So the, the title itself says Jennifer Doudna Gene Editing the, hu the Future of the Human Race and I wanted more Gene Editing. I wanted to hear more about her actual work, the contents of her work and the implications of them. So so it does go into Gene Editing and what it is and the the science behind it and the, the science she's worked on. But I felt like it took way too long before we got into the nitty-gritty of the implications of gene editing, which to me is a fascinating subject that should be fascinating to someone who is studying it. What the possibilities of gene editing means, uh, both practically as well as uh, ethically. But the main reason it got a low placement uh, below the other biographies uh, because uh, obviously I had a lot of biographies in my book to price reading the main reason it got a lower placement was the writing format of the biography and Walter Isaacson's portrayal of his subject and his insertion of himself and his, and the evaluation of the subject that I found um, unnecessary and annoying. So <laughs> there's that. So I actually think I will cut it here and leave uh, the um, Booker International books for the next video um, as well as my Springathon reading and and one or two other books that I've read since um, reading my Book 2 Price books for another wrap-up video because this is probably already very long. Uh, so I would love to know if you read any of these books and you have thoughts on them. I would love to know if you were one of the Book 2 Prize judges for the previous round or if you are one now and how that is going. If you have any thoughts about your judgment process, uh, I'd be very curious about that. As I said, I felt like my books were generally on the same level so it was difficult for me to rank them this time. It felt like I took away something from all of the books I read. Uh, so that is always something that's really fun with the booktube prize that gets you to prioritize books that you might um, never have picked up or that might have taken a long time for you to get around to. So there's that. Let's chat about these books or any other books you've read recently and really enjoyed in the comments below. And that was all I wanted to say. I hope you're having a good day and I will talk to you soon. Bye!